being joined by our regular season champion, John Henry Machek. Um, thank you for joining us. We're going to roll straight to questions. A friendly reminder, if you have a question, raise your hand within the Zoom platform or send us a chat. To kick us off, we're going to start with Bob Pock. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, John Hunter. Um, I kind of have the last year's cup race from Michigan on my screen. And it was one of those days that wasn't great for you. And it kind of made me think of just like, what, what is kind of, how is life different a year now compared to for you a year ago? Uh, well, Bob, I was stressing out to try and run 25th every week, um, putting in a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of sim time. Um, a lot of studying of uh, data uh, with no practice, rookie year, cup series. It was difficult. Um, but at the same time, uh, I felt like Michigan was going to be one of our races, uh, running well, all day, maximizing restarts, and um, wasn't very good. Uh, we ended up spinning through the grass. So uh, life has definitely changed in, in a positive way, I feel like. Um, now I'm stressing out to go and try and win the NASCAR Canadian World Truck Series uh, championships. So um, it, it's definitely uh, rewarding when you put in the time and effort and uh, you're, you're able to work so hard at, at trying to do your best every single week and, and you're competitive every single week. Um, you know, showing up at the racetrack that you're one of the guys to be, if not the guy to be every single week. So um, that's uh, definitely a nice feeling to have. I'm having fun. I'm smiling. Uh, the, the truck schedule has definitely been nice as well uh, this year um, with having Aspen brought into the world. So um, a lot has changed, but all for the positive and uh, winning races. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, our next question is going to come from Kyle Dalton. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, John Hunter. Uh, so I visited with Ben Rhodes last week, and we talked about the uh, incident at Watkins Glen, and he was not happy about it and said he, you had the conversation. The picture was taken. He obviously, he said he didn't have a smile on his face for a reason, and he said he owed you one. So both of you are heading into the playoffs. What is your mindset heading into the playoffs? Does that even factor into your thoughts, or do you just focus on you and what's going forward? Just focus on me and what's going forward. Um, I mean, I went up to him, apologized, talked him through the situation. Um, it, it was my fault, my mistake. Uh, wheel hop getting into turn one and it shot me across the racetrack and that that was it. Um, there, there was no reason for me to wreck him on lap one. There was no reason for me to wreck him at all. I had nothing to gain uh, other than playoff points and trying to win stages and trying to win the race. So um, ultimately, uh, getting into Ben ended up leading the spinning Chandler, uh, which I didn't want to do from a teammate standpoint. Um, he had to meet in the off. So nothing, nothing was beneficial for me. Um, and, and I understand. I, I told him if he owes me one or if he feels he owes one, then fine. Uh, I get it, but we race each hard all year, all, all, all year long, uh, door to door. We've rubbed some, um, it, it's, it's been a, a lot of aggressive racing, which is fine. Um, but all I have to do is focus on, on us, not make mistakes, not beat ourselves up and, and try races. Um, and if we're able to do so and lock ourselves into that championship four. Um, so, um, it is what it is. It's past. Uh, I I've said my two cents. I've apologized for it. Um, not much more I can do. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next question is going to come from Taryn Watt. Go ahead, Taryn. Hi, John Hunter. Um, how do you keep your mind clear and not let talk of being the favorite take over? Or is that something you actually embrace? Uh, I mean, it's definitely nice to be called the favorite. But at the same time, um, just because we're called the favorite uh, doesn't mean that we stop working. Um, there, there's a lot of work, uh, a lot of detailed work, uh, a lot of execution, uh, a lot of optimization from, from week in, week out. Um, studying uh, a lot of things that go into kind of making you the favorite. Um, so for us, we're, we're humble. Um, we want to continue to win races. Uh, and, and for myself, um, I, I've been the underdog. Uh, I've had that, that kind of mindset 
Um, and, and now we're, we're kind of the favorite going into it. Um, so we just have to go out there and perform. We can't beat ourselves. We've had the championship mindset since the first race of the year. Um, and we're going to continue to do so. Um, now is really when it counts and, and hopefully we can carry the momentum and uh, all of the race wins that we've had so far this year into the playoffs and uh, go get quite a few more wins. Um, the, the racetracks coming up for us are, I feel like, really good for myself and, and Cal Bush Motorsports in a whole. Um, and, and we just have to execute. Um, we, we can't beat ourselves. And then kind of building off of Bob's question earlier, obviously being successful just will naturally lead to better stresses, as you said, winning a championship. But what is it about the truck itself that maybe you enjoy more or you're able to find that success easier as opposed to what was cup? Oh, um, I guess equipment, uh, equipment, resources, um, all the work and all the effort that Kyle puts into KBM, all the guys, and girls at, at Kyle Busch Motorsports that put in uh, the, the time and effort, um, as well as Toyota, TRD, um, er, everything that they are able to do for us as drivers, uh, as um, teams, uh, they, they put a lot of effort in behind the scenes as well. So um, it, it's nice to be able to be in competitive equipment every single week. Uh, I've enjoyed the truck series where I got my start. Um, I feel like the cup series on the mile and a half package or the, the high downforce package drives similar to a truck, um, and whatnot. So, uh, I've, I've enjoyed all, all three series that I've been in, uh, each one is unique in its own way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next question is going to come from Jordan Bianchi. Go ahead, Jordan. Hey, John, I'm kind of looking ahead to next year, wondering what, uh, where you at in forming your plans? <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. Um, I, I'm not sure there's definitely been some talks, uh, of, of a lot of different things, but at the same time, um, not trying to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, it definitely is time crunch time and silly season, I, I guess you can say. So, um, who knows what may happen, but, um, right now we're focused on trying to win races and win the championship. Um, that that's all that matters right now. Um, if I don't perform now, then, uh, next year, it doesn't matter. So, um, we're, we're focused and, our eyes are set on the task of, of winning uh, gateway this weekend and uh, trying to go for, for wins through, through the next seven races and to bring home that, that year in a uh, huge trophy. If you had to guess, would, would you think you're going to be back in the truck series next year or do you sh see yourself in a different series? Who knows? Uh, everything is kind of up in the air and um, I'm, I'm at the mercy of uh, Kyle Toyota and everyone else. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, our next session will come from Vince Welch. Go ahead, Vince. John Hunter, when you look at the stats, uh, obviously it's been a dominating season uh, for you guys. Uh, it's hard to pick out any area in which you haven't excelled, but uh, I know you guys <laughs> nitpick it. Um, so where can you be better um, as a team? And then also – um, on the second half of that question, take it to you as an individual and, and what are some areas where maybe you need to clean up if, if there are any? Uh, there's been really three races that stand out that we haven't run good at. Uh, Circuit of the Americas, Nashville and Knoxville. Well, four, I guess, uh, including Bristol Dirt. Um, so luckily we have those road course or that road course out of the way, the two dirt races out of the way. And uh, Nashville is kind of unique in its own way. So um, I, I feel like more of the, the one-off racetracks or wildcard racetracks, we, we haven't been so great at, but we went to work after Coda and made Watkins Glen way better. Um, for myself, uh, I just can't make mistakes, can't speed on pit road, uh, got to optimize restarts, um, pick and choose my battles when, when we need to, and uh, try up and, and win races. Uh, we, we don't want to make anyone mad. We, we don't want to make anyone wreck us or put ourselves in in a position to do so um it, at least on purpose so um for for us uh it's going out and having that championship mindset to go and compete every single week and do the best that we can uh we, we've had the mindset of hashtag here for wins all year and we're going to continue to use that through the playoffs so um nitpicking there there's a few races i feel like we gave away um as well from leading laps and running up front to uh, not finishing where we needed to. And that was taking home the, the checkered flag. But luckily, uh, one of those races is coming back up in a few weeks. Do you feel like anything less than a championship would be a failure? Uh, kind of. 
Um, uh, I don't know if we would categorize it as a failure, um, but using the hashtag, hashtag here for wins, uh, we want to win everything. Uh, the, the goal was to come back and win as many races as possible through the year and try and win as many or, or it, all the championships that we could. Um, all of the money that Marcus Limonis put up for the, the bonuses going throughout the year, um, that, that was huge for us as well. Um, and uh, our, our goal is to take home that big trophy at the end of the year. So um, I don't know if I would categorize it as a failure. Um, we we want to make it to that final four at Phoenix and give it our best shot. Um, and if our best shot isn't good enough, then uh, they, they have work to do or we have work to do or what, whatever it may be in the future. It, it, touch on this situation you talked about with Ben for a moment. Um, uh, you've been on the other side of that as well. Um, is that a situation amongst drivers where, you know, everybody makes mistakes. You've admitted that you made a mistake in that situation. Um, but when you're on the other side of it, is it just too hard to grasp the frustration or, or to put that aside knowing, Hey, I've been on the other side of that. I'll give the guy a, I'll give the guy a pass. Um, it's a very good question, Vince. Uh, I don't know exactly how to answer that. Um, I, I think for me, um, I've been on both sides. Uh, I've gotten wrecked this year. Um, I've gotten run into a couple of times, uh, Kraft and I kind of doled it out after, uh, Bristol. Um, we talked about it and we moved on from it. And, um, I, I guess if, if we're kind of holding record, I guess I still kind of owe him one, but, um, all in all, you know, who you race against, you know, who you race around, uh, you know, how they act in, in what they do. Um, and luckily I've been able to see it from uh, a couple of years ago, um, with, with a couple of different individuals. So, um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're focused on ourselves and, um, I, I would rather, I guess, people be worried about us than us be worried about them. Thanks. Great season, man. Well done. All right. We're going to take our next question from, let's see here. We'll go to RJ. Go ahead, RJ. Hey, John Hunter, you mentioned your trail through NASCAR, starting with trucks and then to Xfinity to cup and now at trucks, which is, you know, you're probably your best season yet for sure. So I know it was a while ago back in 2016, 17, where you were in the truck series playoffs, but what, what is the biggest thing you could probably compare uh, as far as your approach, you know, to this year's playoffs from then as you've changed uh, as a driver? Well, uh, I was, I felt like the underdog in, in those two years of being in the playoffs. Um, we, we had won races, um, we had made it to the playoffs, but once the playoffs started, um, we were kind of the ones on the outside looking in, um, we were trying to perform, uh, I think it was 2017, uh, 2016 or 2017, one of the years, um, we ended up finishing second to Johnny Sauter at Phoenix and a must win decision to make a final come homestead. And, um, uh, I wish that we could have made it there, um, but at the same time, now kind of being being able to contend for wins every single week, and I guess being the favorite, you have a little bit different mindset. Um, you're you're not scratching and clawing for for everything. Uh, you're trying to run a smart race and um, just trying to be, uh, I guess, more experienced about the situation. So being able to be in the playoffs a couple times from a whole different perspective uh, makes you kind of respect and, and honor uh, the, the position that we're in uh, this year. Um, it, it's been an, an amazing year for, for myself and our, our KBM Toyota Tundra team. So um, there's still work to do. Our heads are down, elbows are up, and we're, we're grinding. We're working as hard as we possibly can. Thank you, man. Best of luck. Great season. Thank you. Okay, our next question we'll take from Peter Strada. Go ahead, Peter. Thanks. John Hunter, three of your five wins this season have come on mile and a half tracks. Is there any concern only over only one intermediate track being in the playoffs? No, um, I don't think so at all. Uh, I feel like the next racetracks coming up are really good for us. Um, we, we've won it one of the only short tracks we've been to this year, um, which was Richmond earlier this year. Um, we, we won on a unique Pocono surface as well. Um, and then we, we've kind of struggled, I guess, a little bit um, with road course and dirt racing. So luckily we don't have any of those in the playoffs, um, which is nice, but um, I really like Gateway. Um, I feel like we gave uh, a win away at Darlington earlier this year. Uh, Bristol is one of my favorite racetracks to go to. Um, I've always been really good there. We won at Vegas. 
uh, earlier this year. Um, we have a little bit of work to do to go back, but I'm looking forward to getting back in a mile and a half. Talladega is wild card kind of anyone's race, as long as you don't get torn up. Um, and then Martinsville, um, I've enjoyed going to Martinsville uh, from the time that I was 16 and made my NASCAR World Truck Series debut there um, in Phoenix, one of my favorite racetracks to go to. Um, so uh, I feel like KBM has been strong in the past. Uh, last year, Chandler was uh, had, I think, five uh, top five finishes out of the last six races. Uh, and it's pretty much the same schedule. So, um, a, a lot of work to do, um, yet, but, uh, I, I feel good uh, about our chances and, uh, all the work being put in. All right. Thanks, John Hunter. Best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Our next question will come from Marty. Go ahead, Marty. Thanks, Amanda. Hey, John Hunter. Thanks for the time. Austin Hill said earlier today that he believes he comes in with more confidence than anyone else entering the playoffs. Do you think that this is just because he has the back-to-back -back wins at a dirt track and a road course? How do you view that knowing one year ahead on the stat sheet and two, all of your wins have come on either intermediates or short tracks? Uh, I mean, he can say what he wants to. I can say what I want to, um, but I, I guess the, the racetrack doesn't lie. Um, so uh, we're, we're excited about gateway. We're excited about this first round, all the racetracks coming up. Um, I'm, I'm proud of all the work going in. Uh, I'm excited about all the work going in for, for my crew and everyone involved. Um, there, there's a lot of late nights that are happening right now, but it, it's all for, uh, really good equipment and really good Toyota Tundras that we want to bring to the racetrack. So, um, there's no dirt racing and no road courses in, in the playoffs. So, um, I, it's definitely, uh, I, I feel like he's been a threat every single year that he's been in the NASCAR Cup world truck series. Um, especially since he moved over to Toyota and Hattori. Um, so he'll, he'll be one of the ones to beat. Um, I, I feel like, uh, there, there's a lot of work and you can't count anybody out at, at this point. Um, we, we just have to go out and do our job, not beat ourselves and, uh, be there at the end when it counts to, to try and win races and, uh, it, try and win that, that championship trophy, um, at Phoenix. All right. Thanks, John Hunter. Good luck these next few weeks. Thank you. All right. Our next question will come from Tino. Go ahead, Tino. Thank you. Hey, John Hunter, um, I was just wondering how much has Kyle Busch helped you or mentored you throughout this season? And, you know, what has he done specifically to help you become a better driver? Uh, Kyle has been a, a huge asset to me and not only to myself, but everyone that's driven at Kyle Busch Motorsports this year. Um, he's a part of our debriefs. I'm able to call him, ask him questions, text him, ask him questions. Um, I, I feel like uh, him and I kind of became friends uh, over the past couple of years as well. Um, so being able to kind of reach out to him, I, I know that he's going to give me uh, the, the right answer, uh, what, what he thinks. Um, if I mess up, I know um, he, he's probably one of the first ones to tell me about it, but we can relive that situation and learn from it, move on and not make the same mistake twice. Um, so uh, luckily he hasn't had to do a lot of that this year um, with myself, but um, Kyle is a huge asset. Uh, he, he knows what his vehicles are capable of. He gets in them five times a year and makes sure that they're good. And he wants to win races as well. Um, so it, it's been a huge asset to having him uh, a part of my career, um, being able to ask him questions. And uh, he's just full of knowledge. And he, he may look at some things from a different perspective that I may not be used to um, and ask different questions that I not, might not be able to ask myself, which is really, really neat. And uh, it helps the organization and program grow. Thanks. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right. We're going to try to squeeze in one additional question and we'll go to Steven Taranto. Go ahead. John, the uh, number of father son duels to have won championships in NASCAR is a very select group. And you have names in there like Jared, Earnhardt, Elliot, what have you. Uh, your father won a championship in the old Bush series uh, way back when. So have you given any thought to the significance for your family if you were if you were to be able to go for the playoffs and eventually win the championship? Honestly, I haven't thought about that. Um, that that's pretty neat. That's definitely a short list of father-son duos that have won championships uh, in NASCAR. Um, it, it would be neat to be able to add our, our name 
our, our last name at least to, to that list. Um, so hopefully we can get it done. Uh, that, that's what our eyes are set on. That's our goal. Um, that's what we're here to do. So um, it, it's definitely uh, been an amazing kind of growing up underneath that and kind of seeing his career and, and pathway. Um, and then him kind of starting my career uh, at such a young age and uh, being there, giving me everything that I've needed uh, up until uh, I, I stopped driving at Nimco Motorsport. So um, he, he's been a huge asset to my career. Um, I wouldn't be here without him. So it would be a huge honor to be able to add our names to that list. Gotcha. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right, John Hunter, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you the best luck in the playoffs. Thank you. Appreciate it.